Lockdown starring Anne Hathaway and she will tell Onjun for and forgive me for butchering your name was super entertaining. But before I get into my review of this movie, please consider this your spoiler warning because I will be talking spoiler ish ish about this movie. So consider yourself warned. So for the reasons to not butcher a, I think he's an Oscar nominated or even Oscar winning actor, Mr. Ezio Ford should just be called by his persona that he's playing, Paxton, because I'm not going to butcher that man's name. I don't care how many times I say it, it comes out different every time. And we'll just call for the for the sake of this one. We'll also call Anne Hathaway, even though I can pronounce that one. We'll just call her Linda. So to begin with, I love the cast. It was a variety of who's who, not who's who, but you'll you'll know who they are off bat when you see them. Now this movie is unique in that it was filmed completely under COVID nineteen mandates, guidelines, restrictions, whatever you want to say it. So for me, that's an extra nod in its cap because it's really, it was really hard and it's still really hard in 2021 to be able to film anything with someone might be catch, catch COVID and shut down provo uh, production to just the government's doing different mandates and that will affect and we know definitely here in the United States, so I could just imagine overseas in England where the restrictions are a little bit harder than they are here. So this is a rom-com, kind of like a romantic comedy along with a bank heist or a heist movie in between. Even though the, the, the bank heist part or the heist is just a a plot device to push the love story that we find out afterwards a little bit more, you know, further along. It just solidif solidifies the the feelings between uh, Paxton and Linda. Uh, but before I go all the way to the end, so basically lockdowns happen, restrictions happen. This is just the plot. So the Linda and, and Paxton amongst everyone in the world has to get in lockdowns and just like we did here in the states it starts off as being two weeks so before the lockdown linda and paxton were thinking about divorcing each other and separating because like many the love was gone and actually just taken right off the headlines right because we have seen that during the covid pan the, the covid19 pandemic divorces not only here in the States, but throughout the world where marriage is a legal binding document have been on the rise because people have realized, hey, I can't stand you. I don't love you. We have too much differences. We just kind of were in it just to because we were both lady, but lazy, whatever the reason might be. Uh, it definitely was ripped from the headlines, at least in that time. I think it's kind of tapered off a little bit, but maybe not. To, you know too far off but anyways so linda and praxton are basically just living in a as a roommate scenario linda is a ceo of a large jewel corporation i think but she's just a ceo of a very large corporation she's getting you know raises upon raises but she really hates her job but she keeps on just getting promotions after promotions even though she's doing the bare minimum because like we've all known now with these major uh, uh, businesses and in and, and, uh, corporations, most workers are just number. They're dispensable, and in a in a trying time and during a pandemic, the way a lot of these businesses when when went about letting go or furloughing a bunch of their personnel to take advantage is really scummy in a horrible way that they did it, and she kind of resembles that now. Paxton is just a regular guy. He's an ex felon because of certain things that he did. And they just have two, they're two different pods 
you know, that are two different individuals living completely different lives that just completely fell out of love with each other, even though throughout the movie we find out that there was this spark. Paxton was this wild, not caring individual, and and Linda loved that about Paxton. But like most of us in a long relationship, I think they were together for 10 years, complacency gets in. And after 10 years, Paxton no longer was exciting, no longer was that that man that she fell in love with and Linda resented that of Paxton. But during this lockdown, during these little, you know, his Paxton's wild, you know, streak coming out, he starts riding his motorcycle again. He starts doing things like on the whim, which then excites Linda, which then provokes her to start thinking much more deeper into what her life choices, how she just became a corporate, you know, puppet and just, you know, threading the company line and having her herself look at herself and say, like, when did I become this miserable person? So then she taps into her youth, if you want, if you want to call that. And it, it, it happens almost simultaneously where they start realizing hey i might still have feelings for this other person because throughout the beginning of the movie they ask they still ask questions of people that are concerned with one another even though you know one cheated and one didn't and they make light of it but honestly if anybody's been cheated on you know how hard that is to get past that but they make light of it in this movie like it's not really that big of a thing but uh anyways without digressing too much down that avenue they basically start having these feelings for each other and they have an opportunity to steal this diamond that's worth three i think they said it was three million pounds which roughly comes up to like 4.2 million american uh and they and because uh, Anne hathaway's uh character linda has a access to be able to to get away with this heist and basically like you know that heist that they pull off together rekindles the love rekindles the magic rekindles the burning love for one another and at the end they stick together but with a new zest a new drive to put effort and not forget who they are in their relationship and that's basically the plot of the movie i thought it was a very cute love story i completely enjoyed it the way it was shot was a little bit to be desired uh, you know in some scenes but for the most part i think that and i'm gonna butcher your name again i'm not, and i'm so sorry adrian ford and hathaway were they carried this movie with the way they were acting. And again, their their acting was very quirky over the top a little bit, but it fits so well. It make it made both characters likable, enjoyable, even though Anne Hathaway's character, Linda, we're supposed to not like her so much, but the way they wrote her, the way she she played it. It just comes off as adorable, as relatable to many women. This will become come off relatable. Maybe not the CEO aspect of it, but just how she felt alone, how she felt like she was just going through the motions, not only in her love life, but in her professional life. But they just played those roles super well. And I enjoyed it. Yeah, there was a little lagging. There was a little bit of pacing issues here and there. But when those two are together, they had so much good chemistry in between them. Uh, now, I didn't believe Mr. You know, or Paxton as being this rebel, this, you know, doesn't care kind of character because the actor is not like that. But he he had so much charisma in delivering those lines and. I didn't even know he could do a British accent or if he is British, but God damn it. He did a really, really good job and it just fit. And in an era where there's so CGI and it has to be over the top, you know, this and over the top that to just take a current event. Yes. And COVID should be taken seriously. It's nothing to joke about. 
But to use that and be able to tell a interesting, funny, cute story, hats off to you guys. I thought, like I said, it was it was really, really good acting. And if you haven't heard of this movie and this is the first time you're hearing about this movie, do yourself a favor. It's an hour and 50 something minutes. But it feels like an hour and a half, which is always good for a movie. You'll enjoy it. The dialogue is fast paced. It was well written, well executed. The score left to be desired, but hey, no movie is perfect, right? So for me, this movie, and it's going to be a shocker to some, is a B. I completely enjoyed it. And I think if you guys go into it with a different kind of mindset just hey let me let me check out this movie that is not cgi it's just a basic unique little uh, love story you'll enjoy it consider this a date movie because even if you have it as a date movie your wife your girlfriend is going to love it or if you have a very feminine man he might <laughs> he might like it too so but anyways those are just my thoughts. I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. And like always, that's a wrap.